Hi, this is Mato. In this video, I will show you a very beautiful chess game. This is the game between Prokes and Xander that was played in Vienna in 1925. Where is Vienna? Vienna is the capital city of Austria. White started with e4. Black played e5. White played bishop to c4. Knight to f6. By the way, opening is bishop's opening. Black is attacking pawn on e4. White ignored the threat and played d4, opening the way for the bishop to come into the game. Black captured on d4 and white can win pawn immediately. But then black would play knight to c6, attacking queen. So in this position, white played knight to f3 and black could not resist temptation. He captured another pawn. And now it's safe to take on d4, because if knight to c6, queen takes knight on e4, so black must move his knight. Black is ahead in material, but he is behind in development. Okay, he can play knight to f6 or knight to d6. Perhaps knight to f6 was better. Then we would have this continuation. Bishop to g5, bishop to e7 knight to c3, knight to c6, and queen to h4. But black played knight to d6, attacking bishop on c4, but also blocking his pawn on d7. White castled, and now black has a chance to capture bishop. Is it a good idea? What do you think? Will you capture bishop? Let's check what will happen if Knight takes bishop, then rook to e1 check, bishop to e7, queen takes pawn attacking rook, and after rook to f8, bishop to h6, and white is winning rook because bishop on e7 is pinned. So taking bishop is not very clever, is it? Black played knight to c6 attacking queen, but white is not in a hurry to move his queen. He had a better move rook to e1 check. If bishop to e7, then queen takes on g7. That's why black played knight to e7, but his position is now very tangled. And white played bishop to b3. White is also planning now knight to e5 or knight to g5. That's why black played f6 to stop that. But now have a look at this move. Queen to d5, teasing knight on e7, which can't move. It's pinned because of rook on e1. And black's position is now lost. Even if he had two computers on his side, he would be still losing. He played g5. Now white captured on g5. Pawn takes knight. Bishop takes on g5. More pressure on e7 knight. And black played h6, making more room for his rook to move. And if white played bishop to f4, this would be a good move. But he played knight to c3. This is cat and mouse game. And black can capture bishop. But then knight to e4. If knight takes, then checkmate. White is threatening knight to f6, checkmate. If bishop to g7, then white removes defender of f7 square. Pawn takes knight and checkmate. Okay, that's why in this position, black played rook to h7, adding more protection to f7 square. But now white queen continues to tease knight on e7. And queen is also attacking rook. In this position, black got dizzy because everything is losing. Even rook to g7 is losing because white can ignore this threat. He can play knight to d5. And after rook takes, there is checkmate on f6. So in this position, black played one of the losing moves, which is Pawn takes bishop, 
but after white captured rook black resigned because queen is coming to g6 with check let's check some old move here okay a6 then check knight to f7 and check mate so in this position black decided that he had enough torture for a day and he resigned and i think white had very beautiful attack and this is all because of his sacrificed pawn so it was worth it to sacrifice the pawn for this quick development wasn't it and that is all i wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now